Love it. Love it. Well, we're grateful all you guys are here and we're going to have a little fun, a uh, lighthearted conversation about women in ministry. And, um, but we, we want to talk about it. We want to just have an honest conversation. Um, where, where we're at is not a church that has absolutely figured out women in ministry. Um, if you have, we should probably learn from you after this. Uh, but we do feel like we are a church that has taken some time to have some intentional conversations in order that we might gain clarity on what women in ministry might look like. Uh, and so we want to share some of those conversations that we've had with y'all. Does that make sense? So uh, just a little bit about us. This isn't about us, but just so y'all can kind of know what you're expecting to hear. Um, I'll just go first. I've been leading. I put eight years in there. I thought about it. It's nine. I don't know. I just like don't know how to count. But um, I've been doing ministry for nine years and I'm a director of our college ministry. And I'm also one of the associate pastors in Molina. Um, I've been leading in ministry for the last 10 years, which is crazy when I think about it. Um, and I... Uh, and the college director at our church. So John and I have a really unique opportunity where we do this together uh, equally. Uh, we get to lead college ministry together. Uh, I also am the nursery director at our church. So I manage all of our nursery things and I run our intern program. So um, I have lots, kind of a different hats yeah, in that's that. Great. So before we just dive into content, I want to pray. Uh, if that's okay with you guys, uh, let's just pray real quick. So Lord, we, we ask for a helpful and fruitful conversation about women in ministry that, that honors you, that honors your word and honors the systems you've made and put in place. But God, would, would our hearts, uh, would you search our hearts, oh God, and, and show us anything that is not in accordance to your will and, and lead us in your way everlasting in your name. Amen. Uh, so first question is why are we even talking about women in ministry? So you're here, here for a couple of reasons. One, uh, you also feel like we need to be talking about women in ministry. You, you think this is a topic that is coming up a lot in your circles and you're like someone, we need to finally talk about this, uh, or two, you've experienced something and which has led you to the point where you feel like we need to talk, uh, or three, you're just very curious. Um, and I'm grateful for all those people to be here. Uh, I want to let you guys know that when you look through scripture, women are actively a part of the work of God so much. Uh, and so if you look at like Matthew one, the, the lineage of Jesus, there are four women listed in the lineage of Jesus in a time that was very, very male centric. If you look at the promise that was given to Abraham, it was really given that Sarah would have a child. Um, if Esther literally saves all of the Israelites. So like God is actively using women all throughout scripture. Timothy comes to know the Lord because his grandmother decided to care for her, his, her, uh, her grandson. They're like, <laughs> yeah, I know. And like the book of Romans is first taught by a woman. Uh, so like women play such a large role all throughout it. And I, we can talk about here for like another 30 minutes, like women in the Bible, but like God is actively using women to accomplish his work on this earth. So women belong in ministry. So we need to have a conversation about it. Um, so, but I want to just let you guys know that this can become a topic that you are so over it <laughs> because you either are mad about it or it just hasn't gone the way you want, or you are like desperately ready to have this conversation because no one's willing to talk about it. Uh, and that might lead to frustration. And let's, let's just try if we can to leave those emotions here at the door and just say, can we have an honest conversation about women in ministry? I think it's helpful for y'all to know where we're coming from. So we, we talk about our experience and our roles. So we are at a church called Fernoni Hill Baptist Church. We're in Nacogdoches, Texas. And it's in the Podoc East Texas region, right? Not Podoc. Okay. Yes. It's very sophisticated. Yes. Our, I'm sorry. We are in the very, very, very sophisticated <laughs> East Texas region. Um, but one of the, just to let y'all know where our church is at. So our church's position, just for y'all's reference, is that we believe men and women are both called to be leaders, uh, but we believe that the, the term pastor and elder is reserved for men. Just so y'all know where we're coming from. I'm not asking you to take that perspective. I'm not saying that you should fight that perspective. I just felt it might be helpful for y'all to know. Um, but with all of that being said, I know there's a lot of different we're just, Melina, why are we talking about this just in general? Why don't you just answer the question? Uh, yeah, one of the reasons why we're 
I'm personally burdened to talk about this conversation is because I do feel like it is a very divisive conversation. Um, people hold very strong views on opposite sides of the spectrum. And I just believe like we, even in b all sides of the spectrum, I've just found like whether you're like really strict complementarian or you're egalitarian or whatever, there can still be unity in that and the work of the kingdom be done. Um, just the way in which we execute those things might be different, um, but it doesn't have to be something that causes a ton of division in our churches or in our hearts. Um, and I just believe that for like a woman, um, those are like the things that cause um, one division, but honestly like steal ministry from the kingdom and I like don't want to be a part of that um, so it, like the minute that becomes divisive or it becomes the thing that we argue about really what's happening is like ministry and reconciliation is being stolen from the kingdom of God um, and that's important to me uh, to fight against that of just kind of saying okay no we're not going to talk about that uh, or not talk about it but we're not going to have that happen here on our watch um, and so let's learn how to function in unity with one another as brothers and sisters and uh, bring forth the kingdom together. Yeah, so at this point you're like, okay, all right, all right. So what kind of theology are you guys going to teach us or where are you going to shove down our throats? Is it going to be, you know, complementarian, egalitarian, you know, matriarchal, patriarchal? We're not actually discussing that. Uh, we're not going to give you a theological disposition. But rather what we are trying to say is we're, wherever your church is at in this process, what does it look like for you to use where your church is at and still be a, a woman that, that's leading in ministry in the midst of that process? Uh, what does it look like to be a woman who's leading in ministry? And so we have like four different things we're going to be talking about today. Um, the first one is like, is there clarity or confusion when it comes to women in ministry in your church? Does your church have on-ramps for women in ministry? Do you understand appropriate gender relationships? We're going to talk about why that matters in regards to female development. Um, and then we're also going to just talk about the conversation. And y'all know exactly which conversation I'm talking about when we get there. So let's just dive straight in to clarity or confusion. And then by the way, at the end, we're going to have some time for Q&A. So as you're thinking through this, like we want this to be practical to your life. Uh, so please ask questions. Um, I'm going to field most of them to Melina, but like, please ask questions. We want to figure out how this can relate to your life. So uh, the, the very first point is clarity or confusion. So Melina, when we say clarity or confusion, what are we talking about? Yeah. Uh, so we kind of just already referenced it. It's like you need to know where your church stands um, with just women in ministry. Um, what, what roles can they play? What roles can't they play? Um, and I would just say that if you're a ministry leader in here, sometimes that conversation is really scary. Uh, like just kind of going, oh, I don't know if I really want to define that because that means I might have to have some really hard conversations. Um, but I will tell you from personal experience <laughs> uh, that clarity for me is so helpful and actually less offensive. Um, when I, like when there is clarity of um, what role I can play, it, it like, I can handle that. Like if it is like, I can't hold this role because this is the stance that our church has. That's okay. Um, but if I don't have the clarity, I'm making assumptions of like my leadership ability. So like, am I not being asked to step into this role because you don't think I'm uh, a good teacher? Or do you think that I'm not able to execute or lead this meeting? Do you, like it becomes question of my character um, and my leadership a lot more than like, if it's a, like that's easier for me. Like, oh, I can't step into this because this is a role of, of a male. Cool. Um, instead of me questioning my character uh, or my leadership development. And I, because there have been times where I've asked that question to leadership above me of just going, hey, did I like, Am I not stepping into that space because it's male like oriented or is there something that I need to develop as a leader before you put me in that position? Um, and I would just say like as development, like for females, you need to be able to give that criticism to them um, and not just like or that construction, cr constructive criticism. That's a better word of um, where they need to grow and develop as a leader if they're not stepping into a position. Um, but that needs to be really clear of why or why not um, they're given a role or not given a role. Um, and just so you know, it actually is less offensive. Um, and like as 
a woman, there's so many more times that I can, like when it is, hey, this is a male role that we believe our church needs to have. Um, I just know, okay, I'm not going to do that. And the other part is it uh, it eliminates the assumption that women make. Sometimes women makes, uh, make assumptions on their own of, I can't, like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can, like, hand out communion, or I don't know if I can, uh, like, teach this or in this space. Um, And it takes away assumption to where she's not even limiting herself. She has freedom to operate within the boundaries that you've set as a leader. Um, So I can, like, I can confidently say, oh, no, I know I can do this. Um, I don't have to question that. I don't have to go backwards and be like, hey, was it okay that I did that? (laughs) Um, Like I have confidence in my leadership of going, okay, even leadership above me has my back um, in what I just did because there's clarity there. Yeah, so So. I would tag onto that and just ask the basic question. Like, does your church have clarity and language on what women can and cannot do uh, in regards to the interpretation of your uh, how your church interprets scripture. Uh, like that comes down to that. Does you do have clarity or confusion? Uh, so do you know what you can and cannot do? And if you, the answer is yes, you have clarity. And if, you know, and if you don't, you might have confusion. Um, I'll give you another way that you can use as a litmus test for this is do your practices align with your beliefs? So if your beliefs say one thing, but then your practices say another, what are you gonna actually do here? So often we'll have churches that say, we believe in developing female leaders, but their practices don't reflect the development of female leaders. And see, like that's a red flag. So most often or not, that actually has come because there's confusion and not clarity. So having conversations between female leaders and ministry leaders or female leaders in a, and let's just say a lead pastor, those conversations are so helpful. Uh, I know they're also hard and we like love to run from hard conversations. Like it's part of our DNA, right? But what if we didn't and actually went into that conversation and we're going to talk more about that conversation later, but we had a constructive conversation saying, Hey, I actually think I'm confused based upon this. Can you provide clarity for me? Like that's a helpful conversation in the midst of this. Um, I'll give you a quick example. We had a young lady lead her friend to the Lord. I don't know. This was like four years ago, a long time ago. And, um, and she was sitting in a meeting with our lead pastor and with me and Melina and our lead pastor was like, man, I'm just really excited that your friend came to the Lord. I'm really looking forward to baptizing her. She was going to get baptized. And you could tell that, um, the lady was like distraught in the face. Like something was just wrong. And he's like, what's going on? You see him off. He's like, and she goes, well, you talk about how women can be leaders and how we can do blank, blank, and blank, but I can't baptize my own friend. And it was this moment where he responded when he's like, well, based on our, you know, our interpretation of scripture, da, 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 da. But then what he did, this is what I want, I really want to talk about. He went home and reflected on that, spent time with the Lord and researched, came back to her and said, you're right. We are teaching one thing and practicing another. I'd love for you to baptize your friend. And and here's how we're going to make it work. And so we thought creatively outside of the box. And so now at Fredoni Hill, we have uh, a rule that any, any God following member of our body can baptize anyone else as long as a pastor is present. And so like we've, what we've done is worked within uh, our interpretation of scripture to creatively allow moments to where we can say what we practice actually matches what we believe. Does that make sense? And so it's that type of creative thinking that's needed. Women in ministry takes creative thinking because um, it, it just going to take a little bit of, of time. But one of the biggest questions, though, is in regards to on-ramps for women. So, Melina, why don't you talk about on-ramps for women? Yeah, um, I would say on-ramps for women, we've, uh, we're pretty good at this in the residency intern role. Um, we think we, I would say as, as, as a whole, I've seen churches practice, um, like women in ministry in that, in the leadership role of residency and intern really well. Um, but the question is like, okay, what about a step above that? Um, what about in the vocational role for women? Um, is there on ramps for them? Um, I would say like, I am a product of 
a leader before me getting creative um, where our church leadership kind of said, hey, we're not comfortable with her teaching on Sunday morning for Sunday school. Um, But that leader just not saying, oh, well, we need to fill this job description um, so she can't meet this one thing. So we're going to just hire someone totally else when she's been leading and developing this college ministry for the last two and a half years and is probably the most qualified to do it. Instead, I'm going to rewrite this job description to where we still align with what our church leadership has said and give her leadership responsibility. So it's like I came on and in my job description, I was the college director and I was leading everything else within that job description. And it was intentional that, hey, Sunday school, like teaching Sunday school in this way um, is just not going to be a part of your job. And but I could have been excluded (laughs) from that Um, and just kind of going, okay, is there like, is there ways that we can look within our job descriptions and what our church believes um, and create ways for women to exercise their giftings and their leadership um, under the submission of the local church? And so in your and outside of the traditional job roles. Um, I know I hold like nursery director job, uh, but I took that job saying, hey, just so you know, I'm really not a kid person. Um, but they said, hey, well, really, that's OK, because you're just re- you're managing. Uh, I need you to lead a team of people um, to fill spots and follow procedures. And I'm like, I can do that. I'm gifted in that way. Um, I'm also not an administrative assistant. Don't ever ask me to do a spreadsheet. It'll be terrible. <laughs> like, you'll just have to redo it. Um, and I've known that about myself for a really long time. Uh, and I was in college and I didn't like didn't see myself and like didn't see a spot for me in vocational ministry um didn't know like what the future held for me um and so I (laughs) it sounds so dramatic but I just kind of said well I guess I'm just going to be an intern for the rest of my life Like, I'm not a children's director. I'm not an administrative assistant. So really, I guess I'm just going to be an intern. And, like, that's all God has for me. Um, And I think so many times, like, women exit out, like, exit out of ministry in other places because they just don't see opportunity from this themselves for themselves. Um, And we, like, as people in the church and in leading in those spaces, like, have to get better um, at providing opportunities and avenues in which they can serve in a larger capacity. Um, And it's not an excuse to just, like, the easy things. Um, We have to look outside of the boundaries that our church has set. Um, So... Yeah. And so I would say to the ministry leaders in the room, uh, when we're talking about on-ramps, it's like, what on-ramps are you creating in your particular, let's just say college ministry for women to step into leadership positions? Uh, Is there opportunities for them to grow as a leader? Or is there a moment where leadership opportunities plateau and they are done with leadership opportunities? So you're going to have to creatively come up with more and more leadership opportunities because you're going to want to develop them as, as leaders. Like the church needs dynamic female leaders. And I'll I'll be the first one to say that Um, in front of Molina, like the church needs dynamic female leaders. Um, So the question that you want to ask though, is like, can someone who's a college student on uh, at your church, can they envision themselves on your staff? Can they envision themselves as, as a girl on your staff? Um, so here's is what I've learned. I'll just tell you a guy's perspective. I always knew ministry was an option vocationally. I always knew it. And I never even like doubted whether or not I could do ministry. Now we all have like doubts, you know, but I'm talking about like, was it even like a job possibility? Never once doubted that. Come to find out that's the women doubt if they could even can, like, is it even an option? Is this even a career path for me? Uh, and so our job as ministry leaders is to help them envision what a career in ministry could look like, uh, not just a fully vocational career, a bivocational career, what could an, an adult volunteer career in ministry look like. And so you have to have to create opportunities. So this leads me kind of to my next point, where if you're thinking about how the church can leverage high level leadership female and understanding like what giftings they have. You need to utilize the unique giftings of each lady rather than forcing female giftings on each person. So a, a woman has a lot of giftings, not just this many. Uh, and I'll just <laughs> tell you um, a 
personal story. So I have grown as a human a ton in the last like six years. Okay. So growing up, I had a completely opposite view of women in ministry. I'll be the first one to say that. Okay. I did. And, and what happened is that I met people dynamic female leaders who did not fit my understanding of what women were supposed to be in the church. So what does that do? What makes you go to prayer? Because you love Jesus still, right? (laughs) You go, God, it doesn't make sense. Then you examine their giftings. They go, these giftings aren't from selfish ambition. These giftings aren't for show. These giftings are from you, God. So what do we do with that? It forces me to realize God's not just going to give the female giftings of hospitality, um, and loving children, uh, and the encourager, right? Although we have those in our church and thank God for them. Like we need them, right? But he's also going to give them other giftings. Like Melina is a dynamic leader of groups. Uh, I always joke, like if there's a zombie apocalypse and she's on the other side of the world, I'm not worried about it. She's probably standing up on a rock saying, you go over here. You're doing this. You go over there. And, you know, like she going to be just fine. Like, and, uh, cause she's a dynamic leader. Like that's how God has made her. Um, or there's people that we know that are dynamic teachers. Okay. That, that gift of teaching is acceptable in elementary schools, but not acceptable in the church. So like, okay, different story, different day. But I'm just saying we have to think about the positions that we have in the church and say, how do we not just force this girl to fit these female giftings? Because, you know, this is a girl volunteer opportunity. And so girl volunteers are are normally this. And so they're going to take care of all the food at the party. Like, or... We've just let her run the entire thing because she's a really good administrator or she's organizer or could do anything or she can lead all the volunteers ever. Like, how could you step out of that and hand over more responsibilities to her based upon her individual uh, giftings? And so when you meet people that have these giftings, the first thing that you can say is, oh, you don't fit the normal box and you can stop there or you could say, okay. And how am I going to adapt this job to utilize your giftings? Just in general, leadership principle 101 is that you want to give them responsibilities that align with the unique giftings that God's given them. You're going to get the most out of them, whether they're male or female. That's like how it works. So particularly you want to apply that to females and thinking through their giftings. Uh, Take it one step further. I want you to think about the adult volunteers that you have in your college ministry. Uh, Side note, if your college ministry doesn't have adult volunteers, um, you need them. You you want to be a part of the multi-generational church. You need those adult volunteers. Um, We're actually looking at how we can increase more adult volunteers in our college ministry. But I want you to look at the women that are in your congregation. The, the, fully grown adult volunteer women Um, who in your church is actually running their own business outside of the congregation. Like who is leading in the marketplace? Who knows how to hire and fire? Okay. Well, maybe an opportunity for her is leadership development where she can come in and develop your, your team of leaders. Okay. Who is a teacher? Like who's a high school English teacher? Maybe her skill set is actually teaching in your place. Who is a great caretaker? Or maybe they should be a host home for one of your small groups. Take the giftings that God's given them. And instead of forcing them into this other role, utilize those giftings in a way that benefits the ministry and the work that God has for you. So don't just shove them one position. That's for adult volunteers and also for the college girls in your group. There's there's a different subject we want to talk about too. And it's the subject of whether or not something is appropriate or not. We run into this a lot in regards to the male and female relationship. Uh, And Melina's going to talk on this in in a second, but often the lie that we hear is I cannot invest in a female leader as much as I can a male leader if I'm male because it's not appropriate. And I'm just here to say that that is a really bad excuse. Um, There's a way that you can be appropriate and invest at the same time. And so we're going to talk through that. Melina, why don't you just chat for a little bit? Yeah, I would just say like, this is a a really large roadblock for women in ministry. And um, yeah, because we kind of uh, 
it's just the easy way out and level invest of investment um, is typically not the same uh, for one or the other. And um, I just want to say like, as pastors or men in the room, um, to not look at them as just like people that are going to lure you into an inappropriate relationship or uh, steal your job or like you're not going to get fired because some girl wants to like be developed as a leader Um, and you can't operate out of that Um, you have to operate out of a out of a place of honor and respect um, and not fear and if there's fear in you in that place um, you really need to deal with that um, because you're going to shortchange the women in your ministry consistently um, and it's not going to be fair to them and they can't do anything about it (laughs) you know what I mean like they can't do anything about it and so um, yeah but there are just a lot of ways that you can still develop and invest in female leaders. And I would say like John's done a really incredible job. Um, but there is the rule of like, don't be one-on-one with a girl, um, in a, in whatever space. Um, and I would just say, okay, a practical way is like, maybe take two, uh, maybe take three people. Like if you Like, can you, instead of just going to lunch with the guy that you're discipling, um, can you like, you can, if he's going, she can come, you know, like if, uh, if you can take three for hospital visits, like learning how to prep a sermon, learning how to lead a small group or come over for dinner or all of those things. And, um, there should be the same level of investment in your male leaders than as your female leaders. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, The other part, this is the last thing, sorry, is if there is, and we'll talk about this, but there is a difference between like investment versus discipleship. Um, And the other part is if if you're a male leader and you're like, okay, um, there isn't a high level female leader functioning in ministry um, in our church, you hold her, you do hold a responsibility to connect her to somebody else. <laughs> uh, I'll be the first one. If you're like, man, I, I just really want you to go talk to another girl that's walked this, that it's experienced this. Um, they need to see that. Like if you can't provide the way for them to see that it's possible for them, um, you are responsible to connecting them somewhere else. And those women do exist. Um, just are you willing to care enough about their future and their development to make that extra step in building connection for them? Um, so if you're, yeah, I'll be the first one. You can take my phone number. You can write it down. Um, or if you're one of those girls in here that you're like, I, I need that, like someone to just tell me to like keep going. And um, especially if you get pregnant, <laughs> come talk to me. Just don't let it take you out of the game. Um, I have like little kids. I know it's a thing. I'm just telling you, it's not crazy for you. It's it's real. It um, <laughs> it's they're real. real. Yes. Yeah, they're, it's both, they're both real our children. Um, but like you can still <laughs> function. <laughs> you can still function in who God's created you to be as a woman um, in every season of your life. And so Um, and you just need someone to encourage you in that or give you practical tools in that, um, you need to connect them and, or you need to connect with someone, um, in that way. Yeah. So we want to give a couple of practical tips as far as appropriate investing in women. Um, and, and these are just meant to be ones that are, are helpful. So the first one we kind of talked about invest in groups of women, not just one. Uh, and the second one I'm going to talk about in the, in the same light, be, build leadership, not deep friendship. Now, here's what I'm not saying. Don't, don't befriend your leaders. That means you're a terrible leader if you aren't your friends with the people you're leading, right? Because to be an effective leader, you need friendship and challenge. And if you only give challenge, you're a dictator, not a leader. And if you only give friendship and, you're, and there's no challenge, then you're just my homie. Like, you've got to have friendship and challenge. So, how do we do that? Well, invest in groups of women, not just one. If you're going to do some sort of leadership coaching, you can do that coaching and with numerous people there. It doesn't have to just be a one-on-one setting. Or the one that I really enjoy is build leadership. So if I'm having a conversation with someone who, let's, let's just say they're a resident of mine or they're a team leader of mine, I'm having conversations that are much more like a coaching call or asking, how did this conversation go from last time we met? You said you were going to talk with them. How is this system running? Do What do we need to change about these meetings? Have we done the follow-up from these four people? Have we ordered this? 
What did she say after we talked to them? Have you communicated with this person? Can you give me more feedback? What challenges are you facing? How can I help you in the midst of that? What I'm doing right there is I'm doing leadership coaching. And often that's the leadership coaching that just gets thrown out and only given to the men. And what I'm saying is that there was nothing inappropriate in anything I just asked. (laughs) There was absolutely nothing inappropriate. (laughs) And I can do that in an appropriate environment. And you guys all know what appropriate environments are. I can do that in an appropriate environment, just like I can do that with a woman and just like I can do that with a man. The only difference is that with a man, I might take the conversation a little deeper and say, man, last time we spoke, you said you're struggling with this sin. Can you tell me more how that's going? I don't need to have that conversation with my female leader. I don't need to, but I can ask her, how's your week going? How can I pray for you? I can still care for her, but there's a level that's there. And so we say build leadership, not deep friendship, but I still care for her as a human and as a friend. So what do I do? I invite her over to my house, which is a safe conduit where my wife and I can together build friendship with her. So I'm still caring about her and building friendship with her, but I'm thinking more about environment because I'm not going to let this appropriate thing keep me from developing her as a leader. Uh, and so I, that comes up in a lot. Um, Melina, you kind of already talked about connecting high-level female leaders. I think I've already spoken about seek to give leadership opportunities, think creatively. Uh, I, For better or for worse, and I'll just say that, for better or for worse, I have a filter. I'm going to try to give more leadership opportunities to girls than I do guys. It's just like a filter for better or for worse, but it's because I think guys naturally get more. And so if I can proactively give more to the ladies, um, then I'm making up for the inefficiencies. Now, like I said, that's my thing for better or for worse, but you have to think creatively about how you're doing that. Um, And then the last one. Yeah, I would just say in this, like be comfortable with communicating boundaries. Um, I was the first, like, cause I craved leadership development and I wanted to be appropriate in relationship. Um, and so I wanted clarity there. Like, what are you, like, what's comfortable? What's not comfortable? How can I, uh, like, how can I engage in this relationship? And just knowing like my desire was to honor that. But if you communicate those, um, you won't have to have any awkward conversations on the back end. Um, like, hey, we're not going to like meet with the door closed or we're not going to meet in a coffee shop or we're not going to um, like, don't just like casually jokingly text me. Um, that's weird. <laughs> you know, like you can text me uh, information, uh, but I just know that. And so I know like how to operate within that relationship. Um, and so knowing those like as a leader and then knowing those um, and how to communicate those up front is just really helpful and will keep you from stumbling into things that you don't know how to get out of or how to deal with. So, um, That's good. yeah. Uh, so at this point, I want to give you guys a couple of reflection questions. These are ones that if you want to write them down, you can just have a photo. That's fine too. But the whole goal is I want you to think about your current situation and where you're at. Um, and at the exact same time, you might think through all these questions and you might get frustrated or you might feel good about yourself. And I would just say, if you're frustrated, we're going to talk about heart posture in just one second. All right. God does not want you to be mad and angry right now. So like, let's just have an open dialogue here. So we're a couple of reflection questions. Um, just for you to think about theoretically, but, uh, what on ramps does your church or college ministry have for women in ministry? In other words, if a woman were to come to you, a college student would come to, let's just say you're a college pastor and would say, I think God has called me to do ministry with my life. How can I do that? I don't think I'm going to end up in children's ministry. I think I might end up in college. Does your church have an answer? The answer is yes. That's an on-ramp. The answer is no. You're stuck on the highway. So like, that's the first question. The second one that is worth consideration is what's the highest level leadership position a woman currently has at your church? And what's the highest level leadership position a woman could have at your church? Now we're not saying that women have to be in in every church at the highest level they could. I want to be very clear about that, but are you even aware of what that is? If you're aware, that's clarity. If you're not aware, that's confusion. Okay. We want to have clarity, not confusion. I'm going to move on to the next one. Moving a little fast, but y'all can keep up. How can you creatively develop women in your ministry? Let me put this in other words. What would it look like for you to use your structures and systems to creatively think outside the box? All of us have leadership development programs. All of us have intern residency programs. All of us have opportunities for serving in our ministry. 
How can you use those and recraft them in a way that promotes the leadership of women? And so for us, we figured out there's a couple roles that gender does not matter. Like you can be a leader of this and it does not matter if you're male or female. Absolutely doesn't matter. Like for us, a team leader position. These are are people who lead our student leaders. So they're the leaders of the leaders. Well, guess what? That is a position that's a high level leadership position, but it, it really doesn't matter if you're male or female, both can do that. Okay, so perfect. So we, we've now created an opportunity for leadership that's built into within our system. Does that make sense how you can use that? Um, so think about those reflection questions. And as you think about them, you might be thinking, okay, man, I, I really need to talk to someone about this. What we practice versus what we believe is a little off or I have confusion, not clarity. So let's spend the next few minutes talking about what we have called the conversation. Uh, how do we have that conversation? And Melina, why don't you just talk for a little bit? Yeah. Um, so I've had many of these in my time in ministry. And um, I will tell you, um, just as a woman in ministry, so all the ladies in here, just like, listen in. If you don't get anything else out of this breakout, uh, just focus for a second. Um, In this topic, what our flesh and what the enemy will want to do is allow bitterness to grow, allow anger and frustration, and um, just stagnant like just becoming stagnant in who God's created you to be. And can I tell you, you are responsible for that. You are held to the same standard of scripture of like confessing that to the Lord, not letting that take root in your heart, um, not letting that be a place where you just stay there. You can't stay there. You can't stay bitter. You can't stay angry. You can't go to your friends and just gossip about how terrible it is to be a woman in ministry. Um, You're going to be held accountable to that before the Lord. And I know that's kind of intense, but I'll just tell you, it's what I see take women out. It just is. And, um, I, and it, and it's just like, man, and we just, we feel entitled to those feelings. We feel like we, we can have them. (laughs) I, I deserve to have this. And it's like, no, like you, like God has said, Hey, every part of your heart that holds anger and bitterness, there needs to be confession and reconciliation and healing and all of those things. So you are responsible to your heart posture in that. Um, because it will be the anger and the bitterness that steals ministry from you, not a broken system, not some male in leadership that doesn't see giftings or whatever. Like that might be the practices of that, but regardless of what role you hold or what season of life you're in, the calling and who God's created you to be remains the same. It'll be the same everywhere you go in the way and the practices and the functions in which that plays out might look different, but like you have to function within who God's created you to be time and time and time and time again. Um, Cause I'll just tell you, like, those are the things that have, has tempted me like to step out, to not have the hard conversation. It would be a lot easier um, to just quit. <laughs> Like, it'd be a lot easier to not step into the hard. Um, But can I just tell you, as I've stepped into the hard, I've been a part of the reconciling work. I've been a part of, like, healing and transformation and, like, going, advocating for other women. And, like, it hasn't been perfect. It's been messy. Um, But there, you are, like, you can't just stay there. And so... um, If you're there, that's okay. There's grace for you. There's compassion. Um, Also, I will just say you can't just assume you're never going to get angry or bitter. (laughs) I think sometimes we're just like, oh, I've got to be really tough. And if I feel any of these emotions, then I 
am not a believer. I need to be more mature. I need to whatever. Um, and that's just not true. It's like every emotion that you feel in that, it's not realistic to just not feel it, um, to feel it and allow that to lead you closer to the Lord and allow that to lead you to more repentance and harder conversations and leading the kingdom of God um, here on earth in a deeper way. I believe that's like why God gave us all emotions is for that thing to happen. Um, And so as you feel them, it's just like, how are you going to respond to them? How are you going to bring those things before the Lord? Um, And so as before you address any leader in ministry, you need to like analyze and evaluate your heart. Um, and analyze, okay, how am I coming into this conversation? Um, because you can't, you can't come into that conversation with both guns out, <laughs> like guns a-blazing. Um, you can say, hey, this thing that happened or this thing that you said really hurt my feelings. Um, can you help me understand where you are coming from in that? Can you help me understand where, what is happening here? Um, and come with humility, come with gentleness and kindness, um, and even be willing. This is, this was a hard part for me. <laughs> be willing to receive that I misunderstood. That that thing that I perceived as a woman in ministry thing was actually not a woman in ministry thing. Because um, we operate with this like lens of like, oh, everything's just women in ministry or like I didn't ask, get asked to do that because I'm a woman in ministry um, and just kind of going, I mean, that's how I f- we feel inside. Um, <laughs> but just going like, no, oh, like I can actually be corrected in that and I can receive that. Um, And so that's just kind of like our, like my perspective in that Um, and just wait for the response and kind of just trust the Lord in the leadership that's been put above you of just kind of going, okay, I like, I'm going to trust you with this and I'm going to trust how you're going to respond to this. Um, And I'm, but not just you, but I'm going to trust the Lord and the fact that he, like my calling and my perspective on this is secure in who God is. And so however you respond I'm going to be okay. <laughs> like, however this goes, I'm going to be okay because that's not given or taken, like, from me by you. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, and I'll talk about the guy's perspective. I mean, it's totally in alignment with what Melina just says. But if if you're a, a guy and a woman comes to you and is essentially having this conversation where she's like, can you provide clarity because there's confusion, so often the first thing that we do is we immediately fact check uh, well they'll say this they'll say hey this when this happened it made me feel lesser and i just really that hurt me and they start expressing emotion or something and, and it will often go well no that's not right you misunderstood it's this and when we do that what we're doing is we're negating the way that they in- completely perceive the reality their entire process we're just shutting them down you're not thinking about it right. You're totally wrong. And I'm making a little joke there, but like we, we say that. And so what we have to do in those moments is we have to be willing to, when they bring it to us, say, Man, I'm so sorry that I made you feel that way. Can we have a conversation? I'd love for you and I to both have clarity on this. Uh, it's not okay in my heart that we don't have clarity because I really value high level women in leadership. And so I want to make sure that we're both on the same page. So let's have this hard conversation. Right. So what I've done there is I've said, be aware of their perceived reality. And now it might be that I didn't ask you to do this because our other intern is like incredibly gifted at it. So I asked him and like, in that case, it had nothing to do with women and male, like guy and girl, but it could have been perceived that way. And so that's why it just all goes back to clarity and confusion. Like what makes sense? Like what can and cannot women do in working through that? I, I want to go back to that baptism rule change that happened at our church. You know, she came to him, expressed that he s- thought about it, took it before the Lord and came back and said, you know, I thought about what you said. Actually, I think we need to change because what we practice doesn't match up with what we believe. And so I'd like to thank you for that. And let's go ahead and proceed this way. So like, that's a great example of what it could look like to do that. Uh, and, and don't feel like you have to answer them right in that moment. You can just say like, hey, that's a really good question. I didn't mean to offend you in any way. I'm sorry that I did. I need to, I need to think about that. I, I just need to wrap my head around it. Give me a week. 
and let's talk. Now these gender things can sometimes be confusing, so 24 hours may not be enough. <laughs> Give me a week, let's walk through that. Uh, and then we can come up with a solution. But that really the only advice I'd give to the guys is like, just the fact that she's talking to you means she's already out of vulnerable state. And so if you shut her down immediately, you're just killing it. Um, but acknowledge her perceived reality, understand her perception, and then move forward from that. Well, let's just go ahead and let's close in prayer. And if you have questions, um, you can come up and we can chat. Um, Melina is a great person to talk to. If you're feeling the pressure of this, I'm just gonna say it like it is. She's a great person to talk to. Um, so let's just go from there. Melina, uh, will you pray? Well, God, I thank you um, for being a God who has called just all people to participate in your kingdom and in your mission here on earth. Um, God, I thank you that you have given um, women, just incredible giftings and an incredible role to play. Um, God, I pray that you would bring uh, clarity and confidence in who you've created them to be. Um, God, would they deeply know um, the calling that you've placed on their life? Uh, would they deeply know um, the specific steps of obedience that you've asked of them? Um, God, and when they would just even open their hands to what that has to look like, um, would it not be fixed? Would it not be, it has to look like this? It has to be this. Um, but would they let you do immeasurably more than they could ever think or imagine um, with who you've created them to be? Um, would they not put themselves in a box um, or count them out of anything? And would they say, be willing to go, okay, wherever um, I'm given opportunity, I'll go wherever you provide a place. Um, would you just allow them to do that? Um, I just believe God that you, um, you give opportunity out of obedience. And so, um, would they walk in obedience and would they allow you to bring the opportunities and the spaces for them to lead where you desire for them to lead? And, um, God, I pray just against any anger and bitterness, um, would you just guard their hearts and their minds and would it not allow them to take them out in ministry? God, would you not let sin grow? Would you not let um, frustration grow? But God, would you give them um, just the ability to even um, forgive, <laughs> like the ability um, to keep showing up with a tender and heart, heart, a tender spirit and not a hardened heart? Um, and a willingness to um, be humble and have hard conversations and not be fearful of that, um, that you are a God that is about the work of reconciliation and redemption, and would they participate in it? God, I pray for the men in this room. Um, would you give them boldness? Would you give them clarity? Um, would you give them eyes to see the scripture and the word in this world the way that you see it? Um, God, would they lead with compassion and grace? Um, would they give opportunity? Would they sacrifice their own opportunities? Um, would they sacrifice uh, what they've been given and give it to somebody else, um, another woman in ministry where they can? Um, God, I thank you for the men that have gone before us um, and have done that. Um, have, like, I thank you for the leadership in my life <laughs> uh, that you have given and have led and they've given me opportunity. And um, we thank you for them and we ask that you would give them strength and endurance um, we, for our church leadership and our elders. And um, God, would they submit to you and your Holy Spirit? And would you just bring unity? Um, God, I ask for unity in this space. Um, I ask for unity in this conversation and um, that it wouldn't be something that the enemy gets to use to steal, kill, and destroy his church. And um, so would we be builders of your church and your uh, mission here on earth? And I just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.